Hey there, everybody. Hey, Adam. Hey, Bajir. Good to see you. Good to see you. So Adam, in his Thursday Declare Play class, he's been uh, uh, doing a lot of work with us on practical Declare Play. And we have an interesting hand from this last week's class. Adam, how would you summarize what is practical Declare Play? And maybe you could set up this hand and we'll jump in. Yeah, when I talk about practical Declare Play, I'm bringing psychology into it. And, um, you know, I, practical rather than technical. And both of them are important. Technical, like what's the way to play this suit combination? And, you know, what are the percentages and things like that? But practical mm -hmm. is just like what works at the table. Mm. Um, you know, putting yourself in the defender's shoes and sometimes using their instincts against them. Mm. Yeah. Right. So it's like all the rote learning, all the memorization, all the practice is important, takes us so far, but the human component is equally important. We Absolutely. need to remember we're playing yeah, with other we're... warm blooded. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, you know, mm -hmm. it's a game of limited information. And so sometimes, you know, limiting the information that your opponents have or, you know, taking advantage of, what you know their tendencies are going to be, mm. you know, it's amazing how how much that can help. So this hand, I I, I just thought was so cool. How uh, maybe you can set it up in how it relates to this idea of uh, practical declare play. Yeah, one of the themes that I've been going over with my class is you know, a very simple concept that when you have equal cards, right, you have a sequence of honors. If you want the opponents to cover, you play the high one. And if you want them to duck, you play the low one, right? Which is just, you know, a, a simple thing. But like, if I play a king and someone has the ace, they're going to take it. Right. But if I play a queen and they have the ace, they're like, oh, maybe my partner has the king. Maybe I'm supposed to duck. And it could well be right for them, to <laughs> right. Duck, right? Their partner could have the singleton king or something like that. Like, we've all had that scenario. It's like, I'm going to take my ace and then boop, the king. <laughs> you know, it, it makes me think, it's like anyone who's, ha you know, grew up with a sibling in the house. It's like the same game, right? Like, I want <laughs> that slice of cake. So I'm going to pretend I don't want it. <laughs> right, because right. Then right. I know they won't go for it. But if I really make them think this is the one I, you know, really want, yeah, they're going to want it too. Yeah, and it's just putting yourself in the position of your opponents, right? Uh, Give them an opportunity to do the thing you want them to do, mm -hmm. and sometimes you want them to cover, and so you want to play that king. Um, and sometimes you don't. And so you want to play that queen or that jack. Mm, cool. Yeah. So this hand has, has a couple of those uh, in it. So, you know, the lead here was the queen of clubs. And we don't have a great trump suit. And we have all these heart losers. And so I would like to keep East off lead because East can lead hearts through me. And I don't like that. Right. And I would love to be able to get rid of some hearts. Um, and so the ways I might do that are setting up clubs in the dummy and throwing hearts from my hand or setting up diamonds in my hand and throwing hearts from the dummy. So mm. the first important thing on this hand is the opening lead. Mm -hmm. Right. The queen is probably from Queen Jack meaning they're setting up a finesse for me. Mm -hmm. So if I win this with the king, I can play a club right back. And now assuming that West has the jack, I can put in the 10 and boom, right? Here comes pitch number one, right? Cool. And now the opponents can take it most two hearts. And that you can even play that feeling relatively confident that West has a club, you know, West won't be able to trump it. That's right. That's right. We, you know, we know they have the queen at that point or the jack. And so now I'm going to lead the diamond off the dummy. 
Yeah. And just from a practical standpoint, if East has the ace and they see a singleton let off the dummy, they will yeah. almost always go up with their ace. And it's usually right. Right. A lot of the time you duck that ace and declare gets the trick and you never get your ace. Uh, there are times when it's right, but to duck, but those are, you know, few and far between and they're hard to evaluate. So uh, unless your right hand opponent is a real expert, um, they don't have the ace. And even then, a lot ah. of the time they're going to take the ace. Ah. So what that means is playing the king here has very little to gain. But playing the jack, right, if East has the queen, you know, will knock out the ace and set your king up. Right. So, again, practical standpoint, lead off the dummy like that, and you have king jack, you put in the jack. Uh, okay. It could and be now, like if and you we have, find out where the queen was immediately, right? Like here, West wins. Um, but... That's fine, right? But now, again, we're assuming that West has the Ace of Diamonds now. Neat. Right? So, um, you know, let's say that they, you know, play the last club. Just, you know, something for them to do. And East plays a trump and we have to overrough. And so I would love to be able to play the diamonds and throw these hearts away, but I don't have immediate entries back to my hand. So if I play the king, you know, West is going to play the ace. Mm -hmm. uh, and now I have to trump. And now, okay, all my diamonds are set up, but I don't have a clear entry back to my hand. They're sitting pretty down there, but if right. we could ever get back there, I feel like I end up in that situ situation all the time. Right. But the King 10, 9, 8 are all equal cards. Right. And I don't want them to cover. Uh huh. So I play the eight. And right. there's no way Wes is going to play the ace, right? There's no way. It's just like they would never do it. Going to save it so to cover an honor with an honor. Right. So I sneak it past and I get that trick. Right. And I'm going to do it again. Now, at this point, West should the, the, be on to us. Right. And the they should up. they should cover and whatever. But I got that one heart out of the way. Right. Right. Which was the key to the hand. Um, right. And now I'm just playing trumps and hoping that they split. Um, right. These are all equal. And now either the Ace of Hearts is on side or it's not, uh -huh. uh, right? Like they might take this last trump and, you know, play another heart is all they can do. And East takes the Ace and, you know, there we go. All right. I have the rest. Yeah. But, you know, those, those practical elements there, they led the Queen, they have the Jack. I can finesse the 10. Right. I lead the diamond off the dummy. When East plays low, they don't have the ace. So play the jack. And then when the king, 10, 9, 8 are all equal, if I don't want them to cover like this, I play low. Oh, I love it. Easy. It's so great. Yeah. It's it, it, And again, you know, everything that we have to learn and memorize and practice and return to, obviously so important, but this is so intuitive. It just makes sense. You know, it's like on a human nature yeah. level. Yes, yes. We are, you know, using the psychology and the, you know, the instincts of the defenders against them or just taking inference from it, right? right? Just knowing, all right, well, if I play a singleton off the dummy, anyone's going to go up with the ace if they have it. So let's assume they don't have it. Right, I'm going to be wrong occasionally. Right, someone ducks, but this is overwhelmingly going to work. Well, right. Adam, that is so cool. the The example is great, um, and yeah, just want to invite uh, any of the viewers uh, come on by. Uh, all of Adam's lessons are just fantastic. You can uh, join his Thursday class with a free trial. Uh, declare play uh, interesting hands like this every week.
Adam, thank you for taking the time and sharing that fantastic hand with us. Thanks, Bajir. I hope to see everybody in the class. All right. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye.